Okay, this is another ghost story. This is Big Phantasma on the Neo Savage channel. I'm going to take you on a little time trip. A trip to the past. To see how we were living before we had these smartphones. and Before we had, you know, tablets and Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. We're going back to the 90s, baby. Yeah, pagers, big brick phones if you had one. Uh, me and my crew, it wasn't my crew, I was a part of a crew. I'm not going to lie. My homeboy Don was a leader. See, it was like 93, 94, transition from like hardcore gangsterism. Like the gangsterism got burned out. Like no, no one wanted to party with gangsters because they were always starting to shit, so... The party crews were coming up in Phoenix. They had been party crews in L.A. for years before that, but the whole culture started coming to Phoenix. Party crews, right? Throw a party at a venue, make some money, you know, meet some people. That's how we networked. That was our first social network back then, the party crew network, right? So my homeboy Don, oh, man, he had been kicked out of so many different high schools that he knew, like, people from, like, six six different high schools. So he, he hand-selected his crew like that. He went to all these high schools and found the the brain-dead crew, right? It was, we were like a team. It was, it was amazing. We made our first party by uh, doing a car wash. We did one car wash. And we had some females in the crew and... They dress, you know, sexy with little shorts, shorts, and attract the business. And we wash the cars. Off of one car wash, we made enough money to host the first house party. Now I couldn't, I couldn't go to the house party because um, uh, I had some football commitment. But my homeboys went right because we we paid for it, and it was a success. And we had such a good time. And the secret was, we would only hand the flyers out to the females. We never had a flyer out to a dude. Because we figured the girls are going to tell the dudes anyway, so why, why even tell the dudes? We only had a flyers to females. We went out. Malls, high school, whatever. Only the females. And the other secret we had, which made us dangerous as a party crew, is we had the ultimate voicemail. My homeboy Don had somehow hooked up with this dude that ran a pager shop and he had the ultimate voicemail that could be unlocked. Now, you guys thinking voicemail like I leave a message after the tone. No, the ultimate voicemail had a greeting and had rooms that you could enter into rooms and have other greetings in those rooms or, or messages. So what we would do is we'd have the ultimate voicemail and we would have like a skit, right? just like a funny whatever to attract attention. And then you press a code to get to the room that had the party address. That's how we stayed off the radar from the cops. We would never put the address. We would just say there's a party on the flyer. And we would put the address on there. And we would have the address in our um, voicemail. So, oh man. But basically what would happen was... You, you find a house. Someone someone has a house that they'll let you use. You pay the DJ up front. DJ always gets his money up front. You buy the keg up front. You buy the jungle juice up front. So let's say up front investment, maybe $700. Maybe or less. Right? And we will make thousands on the back end. Even after we paid uh, bonus to the DJ, even after we paid the homeowner for a noise ticket. We were 16 years old, 17 years old with $1,000 in our pocket, and we were just throwing a badass party. Now, that was a break that party crew. Yeah, we'd represent. We'd go on Central, cruising, screaming our crew name, go to other parties, scream brain dead. You know, uh, just it was just a fun time because we would hang out and, Everyone, everyone wanted to party, so it was cool. Like, no one was set tripping. It was just, like, you're cool. If, if you can throw a good party, you're awesome, right? 
That that was like the main thing to do. Like, can you throw a party though? You know, can you put something together? And uh, we weren't the only crew around. There was a uh, psychos and perverts and pound for pound players and brown desire and uh, bomb ass bitches. Just a lot of different crews from all over the valley. And we'd all roll and go to parties and meet up and dance and drink and it was all fun for a while and then uh fools from california would always set trip and you know because the thing is like whenever someone from california comes here they're always like oh well we have that in cali but it's better you know everything's bigger and better in cali yeah dude but you're here you're you're here you're not in cali you're you're here so you're not over there so don't worry about over there that's how it is here you know but that that always like rubs natives the wrong way, and we get offended, and people talk shit, and people get, end up getting shot. Uh, this one time, uh, <laughs> there was a hotel party, hotel dance ballroom party, on like Van Buren and like I don't know, like Thirty Fifth Street or like Forty Street Van Buren. And my homeboy Bimbo from Brown Pride had just got out of jail and he wanted to throw a party for him getting out of jail. So I called Bimbo and I said, hey, this party's breaking up. You want me to try to pull some people over there? And he said, yeah, we got beer, we got music, just bring it on. So I was like, okay. So my dumb ass gets up on stage and announces the address as the after party and then we jet. So we're ahead of everyone, trying try to keep ahead of everyone to get to the house first. We get there with about 10 minutes to spare. I look around. The keg's empty. The boom box is, like, not suitable for a party. And they're all drunk on their asses. I'm like, shit. There's a lot of people coming here, and they want a party. And I'm scrambling in, trying to think, like, can we get a keg really quick? Can we find a DJ? And it's just like, there's no way. I have, like, 10 minutes. So... I have to go out and tell everyone that, no, there's, there's no more beer. There's a drink of beer. And then now you got about 100 cars up and down the street. And people trying, you know, people all networking, trying to figure out where to go next. Because everyone wanted to go to the next party. There's always another party to go to. And uh, some dudes started set tripping. And they were shooting each other, <coughs> shooting each other in the street. This dude was sitting in a regal with his arm across the back seat. A guy with the SKS shot at him through the regal back seat, hit his shoulder, and came out of his wrist. I mean, there's just people shooting everywhere. The bullets were coming into the house. The freaking bird in the house got shot. Um, Bebo, Angel, he got shot in his ankle. This dude got shot through his calf. Uh, it was just nuts. So here's a lesson. Don't try to throw a party if you're not ready to throw a party, you know? Like, Bebo thought he was ready for a party, but he wasn't ready for that. You got to be, you know, you got to be coordinated. You got to have your shit together. You got to have a plan. So, yeah, that's, that's breaking the party crew days, man. Did some crazy things. Yeah. Before, uh, before iPhones, before internet. Our network was the ultimate pager. Imagine that. We had a social network that was like offline. Well, it wasn't offline, but it was just disconnected from the internet. Because we were all disconnected, trying to get connected. I hope you enjoyed that ghost story. <laughs>